Hey, so I left the movies from seeing His Only Begotten Son. And I just felt so emotional, overwhelmed in my emotions, just thankful and grateful, just honored, you know, for the fact that God sent his son to die for me so that I might have eternal life. And, you know, growing up in church, you learn about John 3, 16 and those kind of scriptures very early on. And I guess in a sense, to me, it kind of took away the significance, significance of it. The, the, um, it took away the, yeah, the significance of what the scripture is saying that God loved us. So he gave his only son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So like I said, so this movie, His Only Begotten Son, reminded me again of the agony and pain that not only Yeshua, our Savior, had to go through so that we can be redeemed and have a way to the Father and have eternal life, but also the pain that God went through for offering up His only Son to us. So his only begotten son is a story that's in Genesis that follows Abraham and Isaac that many of us probably know that when God asked Abraham to offer up his only son, Isaac. Now, Isaac, <laughs> the humor in that <laughs> is that Isaac is the, was the promise that God had given Abraham so many years ago, but he waited so long to have to have Isaac, he waited so long to have him. So to ask him to offer him up and kill him is like, it's really a strong act of faith and obedience. It kind of reminds me of, of like when, um, who was in the fiery furnace? Was it, no, the, Sh the um, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego was in the fiery furnace. And the king said, we'll see if your God, you know, save you. And they was like, it's not a matter if, if, if he can, but if he don't, even if he don't save, if, even if he doesn't save us, we still going to serve him. So, you know, that's just like, um, I don't honestly think I could do it. Offer up my only son. So like, that's, but that's the faith we have to have. Like now, even Abraham he said um, he's going to offer up his son, his only son, Isaac. Like, thankfully, God provided a ram in the bush. But even if he didn't, he was re ready and willing to slaughter his only son in an act of obedience and faith to God. I just really hope that one day my faith can get there. And I'm working on it to get it to that point. So I want to title this, Holding On to the Promise, Even When It Don't Look Promising. Holding on to the promise, even when it doesn't look promising. Like I said, Abraham had waited so long to have this son. Sarah was old in age. So it's like when God give us a promise, we try to hold on to the promise, basically. When God gives us a promise, we try to hold on to the promise. And it might work for a little bit, but when things start to waver and things start to look unpromising <laughs> in a sense we like hold on god but you said but you said but what we need to understand is god doesn't need things to work perfectly in order for him to work out his perfect plan for us and through us he doesn't he doesn't need the circumstances and things to work out perfectly that's for him to get the glory like it was a story about in the bible I'm not really sure verbatim how it went down, but it was uh, two armies was getting ready to fight. So God's army, they had a lot of people. So anyway, God told them to like go to the river and see how they drink it, drink the water. And anyway, long story short is he wanted to minimize the amount of people that was fighting. So he brought it down from thousands and thousands of people down to like almost, I believe like 300 people or so. 
So it would be no mistake that, oh, they won the fight because of course they had a million people versus 10,000. That's like unquestionable. Of course they're gonna win. They had more people on their side. So no, they won the fight because they had a God that was behind them. So that's how they was victorious. So that's what we have to remember sometimes that God likes to, um, God doesn't need to have things perfect in our life. He doesn't need things to work out a certain way. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. So we think we think things should work this way and be lined up in this chronological order in order for we, us to get this result. But God feels like we should go through the valley. We should go through the storm. We should go through every ache and heartache and pain for us for him to prune us and to for him to get this desired effect out of us but we think we should just be on the mountaintop singing la 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 but i'm so glad that, that things don't work out the way i i want it to work out because like david said if it wasn't for my affliction if it wasn't for my affliction i wouldn't know you the way that i do I truly would not know you the way that I do because yeah when things are good they're just good but when things are bad like the old saying goes if I never never had a problem I wouldn't know that you could solve it like you really get to know God in those trying times in those times of heartache and pain like his word says he draw near to those in broken heart and contrite spirit it's factual it, he'll bring you to a season of isolation where everybody turning back on you and you just have him you just have yourself and you have god to rely on back to abraham and isaac the movie so god offered up abraham offered up his son isaac and the movie you can read it and just kind of understand like the heartache that isaac abraham must have felt you read in Genesis how he prayed for this son. God promised him this son. And he's waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting on the promise. He's getting older and older. And he's like, it, do it doesn't look like it's going to come to pass. Like, I'm almost, I can't have kids. So, um, and Sarah, even Sarah, the same thing. She's like, I'm out of childbearing years. It's, it's impossible. But what's impossible with man is possible with God. That's the thing about God. Like I said, he doesn't, I want to overemphasize, he doesn't need things to work out perfectly. He worked. He works out perfection in the imperfection. So he doesn't, so Sarah was out of childbearing years and she tried to force God's hand. That's another thing that we do. So we say, oh God, well, you, did, you, didn't, you didn't come through. You didn't uh, fulfill your promises. You didn't do what you said you was going to do so she gave her husband to the maid servant and told her told him to enter into her so that she could conceive she's like i'm old in age i'm not going to be able to bear a child in a little bit so but the like like i said god's god's plan is he want to get the glory out of it it's not about you me it's not about any of that it's for God to get the glory out of our lives. It's for God to get the glory out of our lives. And that's that's the end of it. So you could say, oh, you had this baby because, Sarah could say, I had this baby because I'm healthy. You know, my womb is, my womb and my uterus or whatever is strong. I'm a healthy young woman. No, you had this baby because it was an act of God and his love and his mercy and a fulfillment of his promise to you. No other reason outside of that, not because you're young and all that. So we try to twist God's hand and we try to act as God in our own lives when we don't see things working a certain way. And we should really stop doing that. So we should just take a step back and say, God, have your way, have control. You get the glory out of my life and out of my situation. But like I was saying, when um, Abraham, 
watching the movie, like I said, you can read it and kind of feel the pain that Abraham was going through. But seeing it in the picture is just a little bit more evident of the pain, you know, he had to endure in his obedience to God. He was crying out like, oh, God, take me instead. Take me, you know, spare my son, spare my son. And I couldn't help but think about the agony God must have felt when he offered up his only son. And God heard Abraham cries. But God was so loving towards us that he didn't even, I'm not going to say he didn't hear the cries of his son, but he didn't stop the purpose of his son from fulfilling his destiny on this earth. When Jesus cried out, my father, my father, why have you forsaken me? When he cried out, God, if, this, if it be any means possible, take this cup from me when he cried out all these things god he must have felt so much pain and hurt to know that his son his only son felt betrayed and neglected and abandoned by him he went through and he died for us let alone the pain that yeshua must have felt on the cross being spat on and beat on and punched and just all the agony and pain that he had to endure but his love let us let him stay on that cross for us so that we could be saved i was just so overwhelmed with emotion after the movie just for that fact alone that all that god endured for us all that yeshua endured for us so that i could have eternal life and then the second part was that having faith, having faith that God is going to do exactly what he said he's going to do. And that no matter how much time come passes, that what he promised will come to pass. So I like this scripture in Luke 1. Luke 1 talks about blessed is she who... Blessed is she who believes in God, for there will be a fulfillment of what was promised to her. Some, that's summed up. So yeah, just holding on to the promise when it doesn't look promising. That's the other reason why I was blessed. Like I said, Sarah tried to play God in their situation. And um, Isaac tried to play play God as well because he you know he ultimately did sleep with the maid and God still told them after that he conceived the baby with his with his um maid that's not that's still that's not your promise these kids are not gonna be um have descendants as much as this uh sand as much as the stars of the earth you gonna have a child like I said <laughs> it's like God said tell us and when you get done doing what you're doing we're gonna go back to what I said you will have a baby with your wife Sarai Sarah and that's where the that's where the promise will be um the promise will be fulfilled through through Sarah so <laughs> that's what I like about God like he let us have our own emotion. He let us have our own growing experience. He let us, um, he let us feel things. He doesn't control our lives, but he, at the end of the day, when it's done, you will go back and be like, okay, God, you was right. But he let us experience that point to see that you was right. Like I be thinking sometimes it's weird. Like people go around, they call themselves gods and stuff. But I'd be like, if I was a God, which I don't do, but I was like, if I was a God, I will be forcing people hand, like, do this because I said it, because I'm God. End of discussion, right? Like, you see people with a little bit of authority, like police officers or managers, and, like, they really be on a high horse. If I was a God, I probably... But like naturally I'm not that person if I had a position of authority I would not I would not overdo it I would not 
take advantage, you know, to try to uh, make people do what I want them to do or anything. But if I was a God and I, I'm created, I created, you know, mothers and fathers feel this way. I created you. So you do what I say or, you know, this or that. But God is so, that just blows my mind that God is so loving and understanding. He's so understanding, like the scripture says, there's no, um, there's no temptation that's known to man that he's not sympathetic to. Like, he's so understanding of what it means, not because, not only because he's God and he has his divine wisdom and knowledge and understanding, and he created us so he knows us, the, the number of hairs on our head, but because he came down and took on the form of man that he knows us and he knows what it means to be in this earth realm and have this experience as well. But he's so merciful and so kind that he let us experience the things that we feel like we need to experience. And sometimes that means chasing our tail for years after years after years until we be like, okay, God, you, you take control. But he don't just say, do it and we'll be forced to do it. He could have created us to say, do it, and we have to do it because he's a God. No, that's the most beautiful thing about God. We have free will. We have a free will to serve him. And that's just amazing to me. That'll never stop being amazing to me. On to the promise when it don't look promising. So like I was saying, it didn't look promising to Sarah in her old age it didn't look promising to uh abraham in his old age but god still said no i'm gonna you, you it's gonna be a fulfillment of what i promised you you're gonna see what i said come to pass